Hey team, in this video, we're going to look at the for loop in PostgreSQL. I have six examples to show you. I hope you enjoy this video. In our first example, we're going to do a simple loop. We're going to count one to 10. Notice I have my basic structure of a for loop. So we're going to say for a variable name, we're going to call it num n one dot dot 10. Then for every four, put loop. And to end a for loop, all you say is end loop. And pretty much this is the basic construct. But does this do anything yet? The answer is no. Let's do something in between this. The first thing we can say is like raise notice. And that will display a message to the screen for us. And we will say num equals percent is a placeholder. And what we're going to do is say put the value num inside of this single percent symbol. And then we will put a semicolon to end this statement. And guess what? This is our first program. Let's run this. Run. And then notice my output begins at 1 and ends in 10. That's example 1. In our next example, we are going to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. Notice I declare F as an integer and Celsius as a float. So for F, and I'm going to go from 32 degrees to 80 degrees. And notice I'm going to use the by keyword that's going to step through this two degrees at a time. So for every for loop, we have an end loop. Now what we can do is we can actually do the math here. So Celsius equals now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this F and we're going to subtract 32 from that. And we're going to make that look like a float. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say times. Now we're going to say 5.0 divided by 9.0. So we'll do float mathematics. And then that result will go into Celsius. And then all we have to do is do a raise notice command to show some output. And then we'll be all done with this. So how do you do that? Raise notice. And we're going to say Fahrenheit equals percent Celsius equals a percent and then we're gonna so what is this what's gonna go in this first placeholder well it's gonna be this F so we'll put an F here and in the second placeholder we want Celsius so grab that let's put that here let's put a semicolon on that and let's run this and then notice that we get from 32 degrees Celsius all the way down to 80 and notice that we are stepping two so every two value. So 32, 34, 36, you get it. And one thing that we can do on this Celsius, so we can trim up some of this additional precision is let's make this numeric. So, and we're going to say uh, 10 comma 2. When I run this now, notice that it cleans up the decimal. And that is our second example. In our next example, notice that we're using a CH, an integer, and I'm saying for CH in, notice I'm going in reverse. So I'm going to start here in the future, you know, and then I'm going to come back to 65. So this is pretty much the alphabet. So I'm going to show you the ASCII characters from the letter Z to A, and let's see how that works. So pretty much all we have to do is like show some output here, and I'm going to show you the character here. That will be like a ABC, you know, in reverse order. And then it's actually ASCII value. Let's run this and see what happens. Notice our first letter is Z. The ASCII value is 90 all the way down to the letter A, which will be 65. Reverse is what this example is all about. In this example, we're going to learn how to add consecutive numbers. So we're going to begin with just a simple for loop. So for num n 1 dot dot 100, and then we say loop. Now for every four, we say n loop. Now here's the one change in this one. Instead of using numeric literals, let's use variables. So notice I have a n1, which is 1, and n2 is 100. Let's use those. So n1, then n2. And now I just want to do the sum. So it's, my variable is called val. And notice I'm initializing that with 0. So val equals val plus some num. Now we can display that and say uh, raise notice. Then we can say num equals first placeholder, second placeholder. In the first placeholder, this guy right here, we're going to put in our num. And our second one will say val. Let's put a semicolon on that. So I'm going to do this loop until we're done. 
Let's execute this and see what happens. So notice I begin with one and the value is one. Now when I'm at my second number, that means like a one plus two would be three. And then the third one is one plus two plus three and that equals six. One, two, three, four is 10. I think you get it. Now this method was actually sped up quite a bit by a genius, Carl Gase. And how did he do that? Well, he said, I'm gonna take val and I'm gonna equal that the n2, the total number of numbers, divided by two. And I wanna times that by n1 plus n2. And then we can actually print that out as well. So we can say, uh, I need one of these and I'm gonna get val. And let's make this a little bit different so we can tell that's different. And let's re-execute this. So notice I worked my way down and at the very bottom, 100 is 50-50. And using Carl Gates's method, 100 is 50-50. And there you have our example using looping In this example, we're gonna to learn to get out of a for loop before the end position is reached. Now, what does that mean? So if I say for num in one dot dot 100 loop, this is telling me I wanna go from one to 100 instead of some for loop. And for every four, we say n loop. Now, getting out early, what does that mean? That means I do not wanna to get to this number. I wanna exit this loop before we get to there. And it's quite simple. All we say is if num equals like 45, then for every if, we say end if, and then we just use the keyword exit. So we're gonna start at one, go down there, and I'm gonna keep testing. Does one equal 45? As soon as it equals 45, I'm gonna get out. We can print a little message here that kind of says we're out. So raise notice and loop complete. So let's go ahead and exit this loop. Let's just see all the code. Let's do it. And notice, loop is complete. I'm at, I'm out. I got out early. I didn't have to go 100. Now, if I wanted to show each of these that I was using here, I can come here and say uh, loop a placeholder and comma num. Let's execute that. So notice I'm at one. I get down to 45. As soon as I get to 45, I say loop complete. That is because it exit this for loop. I think you get it. Exit gets us out of a for loop. In this example, we're gonna see how to use the continue statement using a for loop. So notice I say for num equals one, n1, that's an integer, its value is one, n2, another integer, 200. Stay inside of this loop. Let's see what happens. Notice that we get from one to 200, right? Just what we expected. Now, what I'd like to do is, I only want to show you the last, you know, few numbers from like 195 to 200. I don't wanna show you the whole list. So we're gonna use this keyword continue. And what we can say here is if num is less than 195, then end if, and then this is where we use that keyword continue. And what continue does is it takes the program pointer, you know, where the current line I'm on, return it to the for statement and have it re-execute this num so it goes and gets the next number. And then it just comes down here and now I'm at 196, I print that, 197, I print it, and so forth. So you'll notice the output here. Ready, let's do this. So notice my output is 195 to 200 because of the continue statement. I would like to show you one more thing about using these variables instead of numeric literals. I can't come here and say one, two, and two, which is 200. Let's execute that and see what happens. Notice we get our same output. But what I can do is I can come here and say, instead of N2, I can say 300. And over here, I can say uh, N1. So notice they can go back and forth. I think you see it now. And there you have it, team, the for loop statement. I've shown you several ways to use this fantastic statement. You know how to use the exit for loop, you understand the continue keyword and how it behaves. You know how to make the for loop even work in reverse order. Now, if you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment below. Remember, practice makes the master. Take care.